Hey YouTube, I'm trying something new this time. I'm recording with the iPhone XS Max and not my usual Canon 80D. So that's going to be interesting. Let's see how it turns out. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. I got the E-Link Smart wireless camera sent to me for a YouTube review. So let's have a look at this. The E-Link Smart wireless camera comes well packed in this cardboard box. Nothing too fancy on the box, but it does have a tiny tick mark on the 1.3 megapixel checkbox. I wish they had sent me the 2 megapixel version, assuming they have one because the option is there. Having said that, 1.3 million pixels is plenty for what necessarily is a live streaming camera running 24 hours a day. Hold on to the box because you're going to need this in a bit. Inside the box, we have the instructions manual, but you don't need that. That's why you're watching this video. Lots of styrofoam in the box to protect the contents. We have the micro USB wall adapter in matching white to the camera. Then we have the camera itself, but we'll get to that in a second. We have a tiny pouch with a tiny screwdriver, a couple of screws and a couple of plastic wall pegs. There is also a bracket that could be mounted on the wall using the provided screws. Once this is done, you can latch the camera onto the bracket like so. You can plug in the micro USB cable to power the camera on. I'm just going to pull this one out of my speaker and plug it in. And oh, there is a RJ45 port for your ethernet cable if you want to have a wired connection. There is a micro SD card slot for local storage and there is also a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi antenna on the back, just next to the micro USB power port. On the bottom, we have a tripod mount and also a reset button concealed in this tiny hole. Now let's set it up. This is where the box comes to use again. There is a QR code on the box that will direct you to an app on the App Store. Scan it from the phone, follow the link and download the app. Once the app is installed, open it and register as a new user. You should now be able to log in using your new credentials. Select Add New Camera, then select PTZ Camera. PTZ stands for Pan, Tilt and Zoom. Now we will have to connect the camera to the network. You can do this by directly connecting the camera using the Ethernet cable or by using your phone to connect it directly to the Wi-Fi network. Select the QR code configuration option and the app will guide you through the rest of the setup process. First, it asks me to make sure that the power cable is connected. Then, push the reset switch for 3 seconds. Luckily, the screwdriver that comes in the box fits perfectly into the reset switch. The camera will now make a buzzing noise for a couple of seconds. It'll turn around a little bit and then it'll make this tune once the reset is complete. Hit on next and it'll ask you for your Wi-Fi password. Enter this. Now you'll be presented with a QR code on the app. Point the code at the camera. You will hear a loud beep from the camera acknowledging that the camera sees the QR code. Now hit next. It'll make some retro dial-up noises telling you that the setup process is complete. You can now view the camera's stream from anywhere in the world using just your phone. Let's go through the different features of the app. You can pan and tilt the camera remotely using the joystick like this. You can set it on a continuous 360 degree rotation loop by tapping on the 360 button. To deactivate, tap on it again. The same can be done on a 90 degree angle along the tilt axis. Tapping the speaker button will mute and unmute the audio from the camera. Hello. Hitting the camera button takes a photo and saves it to your phone's album. The microphone button is to transmit audio from the phone to the camera. Hello. So this supports two-way audio. Hitting on the video camera icon will start and stop video recording. This will again be saved to your phone's local photo album. Yeah, so 
this footage is from the camera itself. Um, the audio quality and the video quality, you can have a look at that. The last icon can be used to change the resolution or quality of the recordings. Let's set it to the highest resolution, which is 1080p Full HD and see if it does any better. This is the Full HD recording from the camera itself. So. Well, there is a very marginal improvement. You may might as well leave it in this settings. Hitting the square at the bottom of the streaming image will expand the video to landscape for a full screen view. Though the joystick is not visible now, you can touch and drag on the display to move the camera around. Hitting on the location icon near the joystick will save the orientation of the camera for quick access to the position in future. For instance, if I set the camera's current position as home and then rotate the face of the camera to the wall and name that position wall, I can access these positions with just a tap of a button. Heading into the more features section at the bottom. We have three options under the amusement section here. There's song and stories for children if you are going to place the camera in their room. Let's try the story mode. A city mouse and a country mouse were distant relatives. The country mouse wrote a letter to the city mouse. How are you, my city cousin? Come visit us sometime. The city mouse in his best suit visited the country. You get the idea. If you're using the camera for monitoring pets, there are some preset noises to distract them. There are options to control your air conditioner, smart locks, temperature and smart home accessories. But this unit does not support most of those options. And to be honest, I don't have the accessories that it supports. Going back to the main screen, you have the option for cloud storage. This will require a subscription and is beyond the scope of this video. Under the settings menu, we have the option to change the camera's name, get its IP information and upgrade firmware. You also have the option to flip the video horizontally or vertically if you're planning on mounting the camera onto your ceiling or your wall. You can set the time zone, the refresh rate, the recording frequency onto the SD card and the sensitivity of the infrared lights for night vision under basic settings. Under alarm settings, you have the option to get an alert if there is a human movement or if there is the noise of a baby crying. The alarm sound option will trigger a siren on the camera when there is a movement. This is very loud, so to prevent you from going deaf now, I'm not going to add it to this part of the video. I will add the clip of the siren at the end of this video. And the movement trace is to automatically pan the camera when there is someone moving around within the camera's field of view. And obviously, since this is a CCTV camera, it has to have night vision. Here's a footage of what it looks like. When you leave home, you can hit the arm button to activate the camera's monitoring mode. You can disarm it once you're back. If there is movement when the camera is armed, there will be a notification sent to your phone with a photograph. And the siren will sound on the camera if you have that option turned on. These are pretty neat features. I've had several CCTV cameras before. On the hardware department, most of them, including this one, are the same. But where this one stands out is in the software department. And oh, I almost forgot. I promised to show you how loud the siren is. So noise alert in 10 seconds. 
If you're interested in buying this, I'll leave the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Take care.